This is Pioneer Field Agronomist Scott Eberskerd with the week of June 25th weekly agronomy update. I'm going to focus mainly on corn fungicides this week. A lot of corn now entering that stage where fungicides could be applied. I get the question most often about what responses we've seen. The data will show that over, the la- over a nine year period, we show about an 8.3 bushel positive response to applying fungicides. Of course, this has a lot to do with the weather events we're having at a particular time and whether it's conducive for disease to, to uh, be out in the fields or not. So as we look at where the corn's at today, a lot of it just pre-tassel. One thing to note, if we do decide to make an application pre-tassel, we want to take out the NIS or the non-ionic surfactants. Um, in, the, in the wrong scenario, we can actually see arrested ear development with those surfactants on corn. It's basically pre-tassel. So if you're going to make those applications, make sure to just spraying the fungicide water and maybe an insecticide if you choose to put that in. As far as the pathogens we're really after, you know, the main ones are going to be gray leaf spot. Uh, we're basically having the conditions now, the warm, high humidity conditions for gray leaf spot to be out there, seeing some developing in the fields already. Second pathogen we're really concerned about is northern corn leaf blight. Again, needing, needing the kind of environment we're having now, frequent rains um, with, with high humidity and maybe a little bit more moderate temperatures and gray, uh, but still we're not out, of the, not out of the realm of possibilities for a good shot of northern developing as well. As we look at maybe the rust species like common rust or southern rust, uh, common rust we're not quite as concerned with, a little slower on the disease cycle side and really haven't seen a lot of it out there. Southern rust, on the other hand, typically comes in a little later than now. We see that in more of a post-pollination period. And uh, the last couple of years, uh, we've seen a pretty good little uh, amount of southern rust, especially in 2016 when we saw southern rust in, come in pretty heavy. But again, not seeing any of that out there now, uh, but do expect maybe in, in a couple of weeks we could see some southern rust develop. We are seeing some physoderma brown spot out there. Um, just again caused by frequent rains, water down the world at earlier growth stages. Um, not a big threat on yield. It usually only affects one or two leaves on the plant and uh, we, we don't see a huge yield effect from physoderma. But if you see that yellow type banding across the leaves, uh, that could be physoderma. Lastly, as we look at the week ahead, uh, Devin's seen some rise in temperatures. Been getting a few questions on how this could affect pollination as we have a huge part of the corn crop that probably towards the end of the week or weekend may be pollinating. Uh, typically the temperatures we're looking at, although they are gonna be up in the upper 90s with moisture in a lot of places that we have, um, we can get through that pretty well. Keep in mind your, your peak pollen shed is sometime mid-morning around 10, 10.30, where our temperatures aren't uh, quite as high as they're gonna get for the day. So pollen survival for the most part should be pretty good. And again, with the moisture in the ground, the plant's ability to, to handle a little heat is definitely, uh, definitely the plant's in a lot better shape. As always, if you have any other questions, uh, please contact your local Pioneer rep. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.